so Mari just came out with this video. I haven't watched it yet. And I'm going to do a reaction on it. And I'm going to share with you my thoughts as she shares with us how it's going down this second, this project uh, second contact and protocols. Okay. Before we get started, though, let's just break down the word protocol. In simple terms, a protocol is a set of rules and guidelines that outline how something should be done or how people should behave in certain situations. That's the definition. Okay. And it ensures that the actions are carried out in a consistent and organized manner. So there are protocols, so we get a consistent and organized second contact. All right. All right. Let's get started. Project Second Contact and Protocols. Hello again. Thank you for being here with me once more. I hope you are very well today. I am Marie. This information can be seen as science fiction, or as the viewer sees best, and I post it for entertainment purposes only. Me too. Still, I take my information very seriously, Me and too. for whoever has eyes to see. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, the so-called Project First Contact was a worldwide galactic federation attempt to assess, study, and even initiate contact between their interstellar members, who belong to countless species, and humankind, the general public. Even though some species didn't have Lyrian genetics, such as the Irma, most of the interstellar species who participated in Project First Contact belong to the Lyrian family, who are basically more humans, of the kind that if dressed accordingly could pass off as anyone in a bus stop, down on the surface of planet Earth. As I am always saying and even yelling out as it is so important, there are more humans just like you outside in space, far more, and they dwell among the stars where all humankind should be. The main objective behind Project First Contact was to assess and study how prepared the general public was to accept and sustain contact with people and beings not from Earth. The you know, personally, I think uh, it would have gone a lot different if there wasn't such an evil cabal on planet Earth getting their fingers in everything and mucking every wonderful thing up that they possibly can. And so... Uh, I don't know what uh, the ET's assessment of the first contact is. It's very successful or very big failure. I don't know. But what I do know is uh, the, uh, the, the, those who run this world do not want us waking up and do not want us making contact. And they will fuck it up any fucking way they can fucking do it. I'm just saying. And then they will spin it. And sure, they will be contacted. But it's not like they're going to do anything that mm, benefits the general population. I'm just uh, sharing my feelings here as we go. Galactic Federation wanted to see if Earth humans were prepared for total extraterrestrial disclosure. Between the years 2009 and 2017, Although the exact dates are somewhat dubious, the Galactic Federation flooded the internet and social media with thousands and thousands of poorly prepared extraterrestrial people who would start a conversation with anyone and anywhere while openly stating that they were talking to an extraterrestrial. Project First Contact was a monumental failure. Oh. It concluded that Earth humans were most definitely not ready for extraterrestrial contact, and it also caused innumerable problems of all kinds. Many people were also badly hurt or even died, during this communication attempt, because of extreme emotional distress, which... Oh, man. So, okay, the first contact isn't what I was thinking it was. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, a bunch of spaceships uh, many, many years ago, blah, 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 blah. It's their first contact attempt. Uh, and it was utter failure. Oh, man. I could see how that could be, you know. Uh, mm, I've been here a while and I've uh, gotten kind of a mm, a way to deal with uh, uh, negative comments uh, about 
you know, the sort of things I talk about. I talk about the ETs and making contact, and I talk about um, entities and the astral and out-of-body experiences and all these alternate realities and time travel and all this stuff. And uh, over the years, uh, I've gotten able to mm, I protect myself somehow with... Uh, the kind of feedback I get, and I very seldom get negative feedback, uh, and I I block uh, a lot of stuff, so I don't have to see it ever again. But uh, it used to really bother me, and it took a lot for me to make my first video, and my first few videos on YouTube about 13 years, 14 years ago. Um, but my perspective, I'm not speaking for the Tigetans or Mari, but my opinion or thing, I believe they're very, um, they're sensitive and emotional and uh, they're loving and they care. And uh, I didn't realize they did a first contact thing like getting on the internet and saying, hey, yeah, I'm an ET. I didn't know that. And uh, it must have been brutal. And uh, it hurt a lot of people. Um, ETs, people. And uh, so they got to be very courageous to volunteer for this job. Uh, just so that you and I know, they're... Mm, this is my opinion, okay? I believe they're, they are purer souls and uh, they are very strong and courageous and intelligent, but that doesn't mean they don't have a heart or they're not sensitive and uh, have feelings. So I know that you and I, we love them and we're going to take care of them. But I'm going to do what I can to support their message and whatever this program is. And I'm going to do my best uh, to pay attention to the protocols, understand the protocols, follow the protocols, and uh, understand that they have these guidelines that they have to follow. So... Uh, with that in place, uh, I think it will protect them as much as uh, the entire mission of getting information for Earth people and help wake us up. It's going to help protect them from mm, the darker aspects of humanity, you see. Okay, these are just my thoughts. Please continue. Which is one of the causes of the so-called extraterrestrial syndrome disease. Although there is still much controversy about Project First Contact, nowadays, we here, strongly suspect that it was designed to fail from the start, and was set in motion knowing that it would have disastrous results, most probably to further justify the Galactic Federation's real plans for humanity, which include even harder living conditions, with this justifying even more planetary isolation. This also vindicating the Galactic Federation's widely spread idea, or concept that Earth should be kept in total isolation from the galactic community and reality, leaving Earth humans to believe in their own limited and cabal-controlled cosmology and its weak, dogmatic science that backs it all up. Yeah, there's a thing uh, uh, about this. Uh, yeah, we create our reality. We collectively create this reality that we live in, the harshness of Earth, by what we think about and what we feel, and how we feel about what we think about. So we think about a lot of negative stuff and worries and concerns and fears, but there's another level to that. The cabal, those in power, know how to manipulate what we think and feel. So just saying, hey, they're creating it by what they think and feel. That's no excuse for not helping or not mm, allowing us to 
be more open and free and connecting with uh, these good beings like these Tigetans here, are the, are, are, or our Lyran family in the stars. Because we, we are being manipulated on this planet. Propaganda, mind control tech, uh, subtle programming through video and music, industry, and just all kinds of ways not to mention how our DNA is messed with in so many different ways. So this causes us to, our bodies to not be as healthy. And because our bodies aren't healthy, we're not thinking positive thoughts. We're thinking, what's wrong with me? How do I fix it? So we're focused on problems. And then we worry about getting worse. So now we think negative things about how things could progress and get worse. And we look at our loved ones, they're getting old and things are getting worse and blah, 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 blah. And it's a continuing cycle of thinking negative and feeling negative and manifesting negative. But there's the more basic understanding that our thoughts and feelings are being manipulated. So that's all cabal stuff. It's kind of part of what she's talking about, but I'm just adding in my thoughts as we go. The Galactic Federation, if you're wondering, you know, the, uh, the governing body of our galaxy, our quadrant here, uh, my, my personal understanding is that it's just as corrupt and insidious as the cabal on Earth. And I think, <laughs> pardon me, but I believe that uh, most of the galactic civilization uh, needs to wake up to what their governing body is really all about and who is manipulating controlling their governing body because I believe what's going on on earth is a microcosm of what could be going on in our galactic quadrant and it's just sped up real fast we can see it you can see it from outside of earth What's going on on Earth in the last few thousand years, how it's been manipulated, controlled, and how the population is getting worse and worse and isolated from the rest of humanity, so to speak. And so I can see the same strategy being used on our galactic civilization. They're just taking their time. They have a much different time mm, sense. And so it takes a few million years. But I see the same thing going on galactically. And I believe that the Tigetans and the, a few others see it as well. So we could say that the Tigetan, Pleiadians, and some of these other star races, the Irma and others, are aware. They are the awakened ones. And the rest of the galactic population, not so awake. So... They are dealing with the same thing we're dealing with here on Earth. We see it really in our face, and it's really harsh. But I believe it's quite possible that they're seeing it too in their own galactic community. And if they, they do, and they are sensitive and emotional and loving and caring, then they're going to be feeling it too. It's not going to be all, yay, what a wonderful life. I'm an ET. I'm on a wonderful, beautiful spaceship and all is great. No, I believe there are challenges out there as well. Okay, let's continue. I have a complete video dedicated to why Project First Contact failed, and I will leave a link to it in the boxes at the end of this video. Mm -hmm. The second contact project, which is being prepared to roll out later this year, is not a continuation of Project First Contact. I must be very clear with this, it is not a continuation of the first one, and although I am calling it Second Contact Project for lack of a better name, as my peers here haven't even named it officially yet, and it will be very different. Unlike Project First Contact, which was a Joint Galactic Federation massive operation, Project Second Contact is a limited unilateral, Tejetan only operation. Good, good. That's like us doing a uh, 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 Save the World program or uh, 
doing like a uh, uh, a Peace Corps of our own, but we're allowing the uh, the United Nations in on it, and uh, and all these government bodies. They're going to help us go into some uh, country that needs a lot of help, and we're going to bring them on board. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's uh, you and me, and a few other enlightened beings that know the score and we're going to go into somewhere and help those people knowing full well that the the governing government bodies and these uh, interest groups that are pretending to be anthrop no humanitarians and they're going to help and we no thank you it's just us, okay? So I really like this whole just us sort of approach. Oh, sigh of relief there. Okay, please continue. This means that only Tejetan people will be participating, and no other species, culture, or race. Yet this second project is fully authorized by the local Galactic Federation, okay. on the condition that their rules and regulations are respected, as I will detail further below. Okay. It is based on what the Tejatans learnt while they were participating in the Galactic Federation's project, and it is an attempt to bring out the good things, and none of the bad ones of the first, and its objectives have nothing to do with the ones of that first one. Project Second Contact Objectives Primary Objective Highly trained Tejetan operatives are to enter carefully chosen places on social media to seed concepts, ethics, values, and information belonging to highly evolved interstellar societies and cultures with a holistic political structure. These concepts are to be shared openly, so they can be adopted by like-minded people on Earth, who can then re-transmit it all over, and to anyone, concepts which can later be modified and adapted to Earth human requirements, by the countless starseeds already living on Earth. These concepts are to be seeded as inspiration mainly for starseeds, so they can have a stronger frame and fundament, feeling more backed up, while they carry on their own work with their particular interests and high existential values. The active and direct seeding of interstellar concepts is meant to counteract the very strong regressive seeding of highly destructive values and ideas, which are flooding the highly controlled media all over the world, in an attempt to steer the collective unconscious to manifest a more positive future for Earth humankind. Entering Earth with whatever means, technological or natural... Oops. Just a minute, excuse me, goofed up here. Uh, yeah, um, this is what I'm talking about. Maybe it's us thinking and feeling what we think and feel, which causes the manifestation of whatever we're thinking and feeling about. But look who's controlling what we think and feel and all this math in, in the uh, social media platforms, for example. And so the Tigetans understand this phenomenon and they're here to do something about it. And People like you and me, we're here to help. We can help. We can help this. We can um, promote, propagate, share these ideal, uh, idealistic, or mm, highly evolved um, social mm, codes and understanding of life and how to mm, higher-minded uh, ideas for life and living. Well incarnating there to seed highly advanced concepts, values and ideas to steer the planet and its collective unconscious towards a more positive timeline has always been the primary job of all star seeds. Yeah. They do so willingly as their life plan, or even automatically by simply existing on the planet, and while they follow their own interests, as they strongly affect Earth's energetical field and its vibration in a very positive way, simply by being there. So that's me and you. We just, we're just being here, man. But the whole idea is to do our best, put our best presentation of ourselves out there uh, to make others feel good, feel better, uh, with compassion and understanding. And uh, that's how we go about it. And there's a lot of you wonderful people that do that. And if you're like me, we have our off days and not, you're not feeling so good, but we try to limit that and keep it off other people's plates. We try not to put that into the face 
of those we love or even humanity in general. We don't go out and rant and rave at the mall or at the grocery store. Uh, it's because we're having a bad day. Although we would love to blow off the steam and shout it out to everybody in the store that's, you know, for example, wearing a mask. You might have something to say about that. Uh, so just being here, being a, a light, being an example is very helpful. And uh, so let's continue. What Project Second Contact is attempting to achieve is to have a positive effect similar to having injected into the planet several hundred highly activated starseeds with full memory of who they truly are without having to pass through the lengthy and time-consuming growth and development process, which... Now that's an amazing... Excuse me, go ahead and finish. Which any being who incarnates there must endure, as this project can easily be seen or taken as a direct intervention and overt interference with the natural development of Earth's culture, the Galactic Federation has imposed several rules that must be followed. Okay, well, first of all, if, uh, if you have your full memory of who you are, where you came from, and what you're all about, uh, you, you might have to dig for it a little bit, but you've, you've got access to your past lives and other lives and parallel lives, and your greater understanding of reality... If you already have that, uh, well, that just, if you can do that, if you can be that, mm, that's going to make a huge difference in your life and in those around you, uh, just by being able to share your understanding and wisdom. For you, it might just be just, you know, hey, yeah, yeah, that's how it is. For other people that don't understand that or don't have those memories, mm, it can be a challenge for them because they're caught up in the programming of this life, in this world, but you're being able to share who you are and where you've been and what you've been doing can help them get a greater understanding of, of life in general, life off planet, life in past lives, and it will also help them start questioning the mainstream belief systems that the dark side want everybody to believe in. So, uh, did I hear it right? Did I get it right? Uh, the, these uh, Tigetans are going to be able to share that, or they are, they are that, but can't share it. I don't know what the rules are. We're going to hear this in a minute, what their guidelines are, what they, got, what they can do and what they can't do. Uh, but uh, this is very, very interesting. Um, so let's continue. Anyhow, I state that Tejitans see no such thing as a natural development of humankind on Earth, as it is all super controlled and super intervened all the time, yeah. being that we strongly see that the regressive forces, whoever they are, have more liberty, more freedom to seed their destructive concepts, information, and ideas, than the positive side, which is always facing all kinds of restrictions and unsurmountable challenges. And now, I want you to, just between me and you, earthbound beings here, mm, that's got to cause, I don't know, it seems to me that that would be stressful and emotionally painful for them there that want to help us. They're being, uh, they're being interfered with, they're seeing the suffering going on on the planet better than and more clearly than we are. And uh, they're feeling individuals. And so they can feel it. Yet, they are still doing what they got to do, what they want to do to help us. And uh, uh, I think it's important for us to Keep in mind uh, mm, what they are dealing with, not just uh, with protocol, but emotionally. We want to, and I know you are, I'm speaking to the choir here. Uh, we want to support them the best way we can with love, kindness, care, understanding, and promote their 
it, you know, if you are in accord with their teachings and their guidance to promote that for the benefit of all of humanity. It's a big project. And so, there. And this can clearly be seen by the insidious presence of all things satanic and apocalyptic, as well as the imposition of countless thousands of harmful ideas, rules, regulations, ethics, and values upon the human population. This is also why the Galactic Federation has been accused of being permissive and of favoring the regressive side, while they always claim it is all in the best interest of the souls who live on Earth yeah, right. and who desire a strong and difficult, yet very enriching, incarnation there, also claiming that without Earth and its problems, souls would have no other place to experience such a variety of boss-level challenges. That is such bullshit, man. That's lawyer speak. That's double speak. That's lawyer babble. <laughs> oh, but there are a lot of people that uh, are buying it. Uh, but it's just, it's, it's not even worth arguing about. It's like, you know, anybody with a heart can see that's, this is not right. Okay, this situation, the way it's going down on Earth, and the relationship between the ETs and the humans, and the relationship between the regressive ETs and the regressive humans, and who is, in, who is in control, who's doing what to who and why, it's just not right, okay? It's not ethical, it's not moral, uh, it's not decent, it's not, there's no love, it's all about domination and control. And uh, so we're doing something about it. Okay. After several months of diplomatic pressure over the local Galactic Federation, led by the Tejetan Queen, Alanim I, through the Pleiadian Alcyon Council, they have agreed to permit this new operation to roll out as long as their rules are respected, and those are the ones that follow. Their prime directive must be respected at all times, especially the parts that state that no means or methods of communication, which exceed, or are an improvement over the ones already in existence on Earth, can be used during this project. You know, I, I'm waiting for the... Uh... The, the protocol rule that the the uh, Galactic Federation has put in, it's going to try to be a little hook or the snag or their, the way they are going to... See, they don't want this to happen, okay. Uh, but the pressures put on them by the Tegetans uh, was too much, too strong, too mm, clear-minded and ethical and principled for them to be able to say no. Or they would have said no. So they had to say yes. But you know, this is my opinion, those evil motherfuckers are going to try to figure out in this protocol some way to trip up the game. So it would be, if it was, you know, I'm looking at it, so it's my job to see what that, where that weak spot might be and predict their Mm, fingers crossed this will happen and so I'm on top of it making sure it that whatever that might be doesn't happen okay this is just my theory and think on uh, uh, living on this planet for 75 years <laughs> okay uh, me and my walk-in buddies will say together we've got you know 25 years 75 years anyway let's go this means that all communication must be conducted using digital computers of human manufacture, with no link to extraterrestrial built, quantum holographic machines. Okay, yeah, right, right, but the regressive ETs, they can talk to their regressive human counterparts with all that high-tech bullshit. Sure, they can do it. Oh, man, but we can't. And of course, the Galactic Federation running the show out there is saying, "No, we don't. No, it's no. They're they're not supposed to do that either. You know, we're doing our best to police that, so that doesn't have nah, bullshit. It's like dirty cops, you know, or a corrupt government uh, looking the other way, while the corrupt law enforcement agencies run around doing bad shit." Uh, for the 
the power elite while at the same time arresting good people for not doing anything wrong. <laughs> it's it's kind of like that, but uh, from out their perspective, the galactic fuckers. <laughs> anyway, please continue. At the link boxes at the very end of this video, I will leave a link to my full video on the Prime Directive, in case you are interested, it will be next to the one about Project First Contact. Okay. The next rule to be respected, is that all Tejetan participants must hide their true identity from the general public, only claiming or stating that they are simply more Earth humans, perhaps only going as far as to claim that they are star seeds. This rule was not entirely imposed only by the local Galactic Federation, as the Tejitans who are planning and coordinating this second contact project, have decided that not sharing true stellar identities, is the only way to prevent at least most of the mistakes, that were committed during Project First Contact. You know, my thoughts on that are that, <clears throat> if it was okay to share your stellar identity, then the scumbags of the universe, pretending to be human, or the human thugs, uh, paid shills, they'd be doing it. Man, they'd be, they'd be more of those fakes out there proclaiming to be Tegetan ETs on the Second Contact Project than there would be a real uh, Tegetan ETs on the Second Contact Project. I just know it. You know it too, right? They'd be all over that shit. And they'd be saying, yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm on the Teleka right now, blah, blah, blah. My name is Corporeal Bull Motherfucker. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. So this is really good. This is definitely a good uh, protocol. Okay. This is a good rule. Good guideline. We're not, we're not saying, hey, look. Hey, check out. Check, check out. Is that me? Young? Uh-oh. Am I busted? Did they? Uh-oh. Is that me on a ship? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I do think it's kind of interesting that my, uh, the hairstyle, my hairstyle, the ponytail a whole bit, beard and all that stuff. I go, when I first met uh, Gosha and I first found out about Cosmic Agency and, and the Tegetans, and uh, uh, I had no idea what the guys looked like. And then I find out, I go, oh my God, look. And the guy back there, he's, he's got a ponytail too. Right back there, I'm going, motherfucker, am I one of them? And I've been asking that ever since. But whatever's in place about no remembering, uh, I put it in, I locked it in really, really good. So uh, I do not have memories of being a Tegetan. I do not have memories of being in an immersion pod. And... Uh, just saying, I am not claiming I have feelings, sure, but uh, no, mm -mm, no, uh -uh, nope. no memory here. <laughs> I'm just another guy on planet Earth, just like y'all, going, What the fuck? What the fuck? What's go this place is crazy, right? Okay, all right, let's continue, please, Murray. Openly stating that they are extraterrestrials would only open windows for troll attacks, systematic discrediting, and uncensored destructive fanatics, who would only hinder the Tejetan operatives' work and mental health, thus preventing the main objective from being met. Mm -hmm. So they intend to fully blend in while they do their work, however, it was decided to share this information with all of you, as we think starseeds will feel backed up and accompanied by their star families, and because knowing that such an operation will be conducted, also helps elevate Starseed's vibration, and with them, the one of the entire planet. You yeah, yeah, it's like, <laughs> help is here! Uh, what, what, what's kind of funny about that, ironic really, we are the help. You and I, boots on the ground. Maybe we were born in the body, yeah, but we're here to help. And then you know, most of our lives we're going, to please help me, help me, help me. Dude, you are the help. What? Huh? Eh? <laughs> oh, shit. I better get to work. What do I do now? Right? Okay. All right. 
Please continue. During one of our council meetings, we decided that better results would be achieved if we shared this, other than if we had kept it entirely a secret. For yeah, yeah. Uh, it does help. I can feel it. I feel it here. We are being helped. It's confirmation. Uh, mm. Plus, those of us who know already of you, Tigetans, Pleiadians, and the other star races that are mm, loving, compassionate, and helping, we agree collectively here on Earth that you do exist and you're here to help. And we're maintaining the creation of this positive reality and the idea that, oh my God, there's a whole bunch of you going to start communicating. So now I can start looking for you and I'll feel it when I see you or uh, experience uh, your presence on the internet and you're, you're just talking like a regular person. Uh, I won't be, because I understand the protocols, I won't be going, are you to get in, are you really to get in and you're on a ship somewhere? Come on, are you? And they're going to have to fucking lie if you be asking that bullshit. So if, if I were to have a cover, I was in some secret operation and I'm working undercover, I wouldn't want one of my buddies who probably can feel me they, they have an intuitive sense that I'm one of them. Uh, they say, hey, are you working undercover? Are you, are you one of us? Are you one of the good guys? I'm going to have to fucking lie. I'm going to have to put on my liar hat. Uh, you know, my, no, I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy on the internet. So, anyway, <laughs> having an understanding of Th that they are here, they are helping, we can open up to the idea, and there's like all these potential timelines, alternative tracks of life. Every moment, every time we make a decision, we go down a different potential life track. We can just, and we just keep going like this, and we go where our thoughts and feelings take us. And we collectively take everyone with us. It gets really deep really fast. But the, your idea and understanding of everybody on planet Earth, you are connected with, the God consciousness that you are, and the bit that you are and the way you, you believe it, you've, you're, what, you're taking yourself down a particular life path or reality path. And you're manifesting that reality by, based on what you think and feel what you focus on, think about mostly. And with a knowing that your friends are here, here to help. And it gives you, oh my gosh, finally, help is here. It, it gives us uh, another level of, uh, another lift, so to speak. And it helps us think and feel in better ways than we would not knowing of this project second contact so i too i'm on you know if i was up there uh, in a council meeting i'd be voting yeah let's do it the way you're basically telling us that you're doing it because this is a good way all right i'm on board well i'm not saying i'm on board but you know i'm on board <laughs> anyway. uh, please continue furthermore as the Galactic Federation is involved, we assume the regressive side knows about all this anyway. Yeah. Yes, ouch, Galactic Federation. If any Tejetan operatives are discovered by highly intelligent starseeds on Earth, they are to deny their stellar origin, although if human interaction is inevitably developed, all overt communication should be done through highly secured and contained online communities, where one-on-one -on -one communication is also heavily discouraged. The total amount of Tejetan operatives who will participate in this project remains unknown, as they must be trained first, my best assessment indicates that there will be between 300 and 400 participants when it is fully rolled out in the latter wow. part of this year. Okay. What social media platforms are to be used also remains without being defined at this point. As okay, so what I was saying, uh, yeah, yeah, if, uh, if you're communicating with one of these people, because they're, they're going to be pretending to be just 
people on the various social platforms, right? And if you sense it and feel it because you're psychic, and of course you are, and of course you resonate with them, and you love them, and they love you, uh, if you start feeling it, don't be fucking asking them if they're, hey, are you one of the Tigetans? Because <laughs> don't be a little fucking immature bitch about it. Be responsible. Go, you know, just keep it to yourself. Don't be blabbing it. Don't be talking to other people on social media. And say, hey, I think one of the, I think this is, I think this person here is, uh, uh, is uh, one of the Tigetans on that uh, Project Second Contact. Don't be doing that shit. Come on. <laughs> This is a war here. This, this is a war for your mind. In the big picture, this is about the liberation of spirit on earth. And the dark side, the regressives, are in it to win it. And that means to control and dominate you, the spirit of you, and to control and dominate, manipulate your thoughts and your feelings and your focus and your attention. And they are serious. Okay. So we don't have to be serious, but we have to be eyes wide open. Pay attention. Play it smart. And play it with responsibility. Okay. Be clear on these protocols and how you interact or engage with beings like this when it rolls out and you meet some really wonderful people online and you're going, are you? No, you don't ask. Okay? Mm -mm. Just be grateful. You want to do your inner work? You want to meet them, meet them on the inner planes. Do your inner work. You know, imagine your experience with them. Imagine your communications with them. Do your meditative stuff to quiet your mind so that they can reach you in a spiritual way from the inner planes. Okay? And then have your private, personal experiences with your ET loved ones. Okay? Just saying. That's just my opinion. And of course, this is all science fiction and only for entertainment purposes only. All right? But okay. More please. We are still considering which ones are the best, but safe to say YouTube will be one of them, as well as other video platforms as well, especially those that do not have such strong censorship. Although the Galactic Federation will provide plenty of censorship on their own anyway. Mm -hmm. The inclusion of smaller, more private social media platforms and semi-public communities, blogs and forums, are not discarded. The exact date is also unknown at this point, as the starships housing the Tejetan participants must be equipped with human computers first, which is very time-consuming. All internet connections for this project will be provided by the Galactic Federation itself, which means that their highly efficient censorship filter will also be fully at work. <laughs> of course. The Tejetan ships and crew involved are the following ones. In the lead role, Starship Alcyon, that is estimated to provide no less than 200 operatives. Then we have the Starship Asterope, who is estimated to provide between 150 and 200 operatives. Last but not least, Starship Talika, in the command and control role, and from where everything will be coordinated and conducted. No other starship will conduct Project Second Contact operations without the direct consent of the crew of Starship Talika. The remaining ships of the Tejetan fleet present here in Low Earth Orbit, Vigilant Eagle and Saska One, will remain in their security and maintenance roles, not participating in this project, at least for now. Okay. The presence and participation of yet another Tejetan starship is strongly being considered right now, as the brand new, never used before, light cruiser Sardiclea, is nearly ready to sail. If she finishes her initial trial satisfactorily, she may arrive here in Earth's orbit before the end of this month, and will provide at least 50 more, Project Second Contact, active participants. Sardiclea is a Talika class, batch 2 multiple role ship, 
roughly only two-thirds the size and length, of a full-size Talika class, batch one ship, such as the one I am on right now. You know... She is smaller... Oh, excuse me. You know how fortunate we are to get this inside information, so to speak? It's not really inside information, but we have access to it. Uh, the ETs, the Swaru girls, Mari, Athena, Yaski, Swaru of Era, Swaru Nine, and the other Tigetans, uh, are sharing with us their, their world, how things are from their perspective. And it's not all this sweetness and love and light. The Galactic Federation is here to save you shit. We're getting the real deal. Now, this is an understanding, a perspective, a viewpoint on life and reality on and off Earth. It's everyone gets to choose the reality, the philosophy, the understanding of life, the story of our history, which means his story, that's what that means, his story about how things were. And uh, so everybody's got a personal story, and we're always being told stories about life and reality. And it's up to you and me to choose the story that becomes our reality through which we experience our lives. And we are experiencing it with so many other beings and we are loving beings, so we are here to help, encourage, support, love, and be compassionate with and live together with our kind, our loving families of beings. And we don't all have to be human to be loving families. I'm just saying, uh, this is how we create realities. And I choose to agree with these stories, this understanding of life, this presentation of information, and the guidance being given to humanity through these channels, Swaru Official and Cosmic Agency, and perhaps more to come. From these specific and particular extraterrestrial beings, okay? And it's my choice to believe in them and thus make it so. So it's real to me. For you, it's science fiction or it's real. You get to choose. Also, the entertainment part, you can choose. Is this entertaining or is it not? Is it educational or is it not? You get to choose, okay? Let's continue. Uh, but fully capable and with state-of-the-art materials and systems, which will allow her to withstand the harshest of conditions found in space, being able to safely navigate where other ships cannot. Her construction has concluded after seven years of hard work. To conclude this video, I want to share with you who are the masterminds behind Project Second Contact, and who are coordinating it all. You know my guess? I don't know, but I think it might be Yasky and... Uh... Queen Alanim, maybe Athena, Mari, those are my guesses, I don't know. Do you got some guesses before we hear it? You might have watched the original video, and by the way, I'm going to have a link to this original video down in the description, and uh, so you can watch the whole thing without my commentary, okay? All right, let's continue. Uh, yeah, I'm curious, who, who came up with this wonderful idea? They are no less than Sophia Swaru, also known as Little Yaji, and Queen Alanim I. <laughs> this. Why did I know that? Okay. Uh, I feel so connected with the Swaru girls and the Tigetans. I just feel really. I feel like family. I feel like they're my family. And uh, that's not a claim. I, I have no memories of that. I just feelings. And I'll bet there's a lot of you there that have the same feelings, too. I think we're a pretty tight group. And we get it. And we feel it. And we're all trying to remember it. 
But, uh, yeah, just wanted to share that. Thank you, Mari. Will be all for today. Okay. As always, thank you for watching my video mm -hmm. and for liking, sharing, and subscribing for more. And I hope to see you here next time. Uh -huh. With much love, your friend, Marie Swaru. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching my reaction. And uh, these are all my own thoughts and feelings and opinions. And I'm not a voice. And I do not speak in behalf or interpret what they say. I just share my understanding of what they're sharing. And I am in full support of their messages and their being here and what they're about. Okay? All right. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye.